Graders, this is Eureka Math, and we are in Unit 1. This is Lesson 12, and our objective today is to multiply a decimal fraction by a single-digit whole number, including using estimation to confirm the placement of the decimal point. Okay, so if you're sometimes doing multiplication with decimals and you don't know where that decimal point should go, we're going to use some estimation to help you. Okay, so let's go straight to our uh, learn book. And write your name on your page. Thank you. Number one, <clears throat> choose the reasonable product for each expression. Explain your reasoning in the spaces below using words, pictures, or numbers. Okay, so we have 2.5 here. Let's see. Using words, okay, uh, 2.5 rounded to three, okay, times four would be, what, three times four is 12, right? Okay, so do you think one tenth is close to 12, or one is close to 12, or 10 is close to 12, or 100 is close to 12? Well, using estimation, we can say that 10 is the closest to 12, okay? Let's try another way. Let's say we've got four boxes here, and each of those is 2.5, okay? So, let's add just the whole numbers first. 2.5, 2, so 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 would be 8. And then 0.5 plus 0.5 is 1. Another 0.5 plus 0.5 is 1. And that would make our answer 10. Okay, so we've done some pictures here. We've done some numbers. What, which one is the reasonable product for the expression? This one right here. But you need to tell me why. Explain, okay? 12 is closest. Two, ten. Okay. Next one. Let's do the same thing. Let's estimate. Let's just use that whole number. And three times seven, right? So three times seven equals twenty-one. Okay, so which one of these is closest to twenty-one? And this is estimation here. Two thousand one hundred and ninety-eight, two hundred and nineteen and eight tenths. 21 and 98 hundredths, or 2 and 198 thousandths. Well, 21 is closest to this one right here, okay? And um, I can say, by estimating 3 times 7, I can let's see, it's not called a guess, it's an educated guess. It's, uh, I can mm, assume that the answer is 21 and 98 hundredths. Okay, next one. 8 times 6 and 22 thousandths. Okay, well let's just estimate. 8 times 6, right? What is 8 times 6? Uh, 48, right? So if we're going to estimate, 8 times 6 is 48. It's not going to be 4 and 8 tenths. It might be 48 here. It's not going to be 481, and it's not going to be 4,817. So I'm going to estimate that this is the right answer. Okay? So... I estimate estimated the answer to be 48 and 176 thousandths because eight times six equals 48. And letter D, 9 times 5 and 48 hundredths. Okay, well, 
If we want to round to the tenths, that would be 5.5. If you want to round to ones, that would be 5. So 9 times 5 equals 45. Okay, well none of those even look like 45, so let's just use a picture here. And instead of 5 and 48 hundredths, let's just say 5 and 5 tenths. We're going to round up that tenth spot. So 5 and 5, right? And 5 and 5, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right? Or, you know what? I think I have a better way. But we'll do it this way first, and then I think I have a better way. Okay, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Okay. And then what do I have left over? I've got a 0.5 and a 0.5 equals 1. So I've got 45 plus 1. 0.5 and 0.5 together equal 1. 0.5 and 0.5 together equal 1. 0.5 and 0.5, or 5 tenths and 5 tenths together equal 1. And then at the end, I have another 0.5. So 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, and 5 tenths. Okay, that's much closer, isn't it? 49 and 32 hundredths. So I think this is definitely your answer. I do want to show you one more picture opportunity here so you can guess the right way. Let's say I have 9 times 5 and then 9 times 4 tenths. Mm -hmm. So I'm just taking this 5 and this 4 and I'm splitting them out. I'm going to multiply by the whole number, which is 45. Then I'm going to multiply by the tenth right, which is 36, okay, and that would go there. Mm -hmm. So now, and then let's go ahead and multiply by the, by the hundredth as well, which would be equal that. Then I can add them all up, as long as my decimals are on the right spot to 13, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 4. There you go. So I just multiplied the ones, then I multiplied the tenths, then I multiplied the hundredths. And because 9 is one of those factors that we know pretty well, we can, we can do that pretty easily. Okay. All right. Moving on. Number 2. Pedro is building a spice rack with four shelves that are each point. Uh, 5,500 meters, what, well, let's see, 55 hundredths of a meter long. At the hardware store, Pedro finds that he can only buy the shelving in whole meter lengths. Exactly how many meters of shelving does Pedro need? Okay, since he can only buy whole number lengths, how many meters of shelving should he buy? Justify your thinking. Okay. So let's see. He wants to build four. So this one would be 55 hundredths. This one would be 55 hundredths. This one would be 55 hundredths. And this one would be 55 hundredths. Okay, so each one, right, and let's add those up or multiply by five or four, sorry. That would be. One and one tenth, and this would be one and one tenth, right? So if I put 55 times four, four times five is 20, carry the two. Four times five is 20, plus two is 22. Four times zero is zero, plus two is two, okay? And, one, point, 1 and 1 tenth and 1 and 1 tenth together equals 2 and 2 tenths. Okay, so that's how much he needs, right? Pedro needs 2 meters and 2 tenths. However, he can only buy the shelving in whole meter lengths. So are you going to buy a shelving unit 
that only, uh, are you going to buy a piece of wood that goes to two meters? Or are you going to go all the way and buy a shelf, or a, sorry, a piece of wood that goes to three meters? Well, I think because this is what you need and you can only buy it either two meters or three meters, I think you're going to have to buy three meters worth of shelving. So exactly how many meters of shelving does Pedro need? He needs two and two tenths meters for his shelves. Since he can only buy whole meter lengths, how many meters of shelving should he buy? He'll have to buy three, otherwise he won't be able to finish the fourth shelf. Okay, how many meters of shelving should he buy? Three, justify our thinking, right? So, there we did, we drew a picture to justify our thinking. Marcel rides his bicycle to school and back on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So, on Tuesdays, he goes from his house to school. That's a little bell on top of the school. <laughs> it's a terrible picture. Okay, so he goes back to uh, his, he rides his bicycle, bicycle to school and back on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So Tuesdays and Thursdays. He goes to school, back from school, and then on Thursdays he does the same thing. To school and back from school. He lives, this distance, three and sixty-two hundredths of kilometers away from the school. Marcel's gym teacher wants to know how many kilometers he bikes in a week. Marcel's math teacher wants to know exactly how many kilometers he bikes in a week. What should Marcel teach, tell each teacher? So Marcel's gym teacher wants to know about how many, and his math teacher wants to know exactly how many. Okay, so let's find out. We, we know that he makes the trip one, two, three, four times. So three and 62 hundredths times four, if we're going to estimate, let's round this to the nearest whole number. So we're gonna round this to the nearest whole number. We look at the 10th, and because that's a six, remember zero to four rounds down and five to nine rounds up, that's a six. So this is definitely gonna to round to a uh, four. So that would be four times four equals about 16 kilometers. Okay, so he can tell a gym teacher I bike about 16 kilometers a week. All right. Now, what can he tell the math teacher? The math teacher wants to know the actual answer. So let's see. We can, how would you like to do this? Let's just go the old fashioned way. And we're gonna multiply across, okay? So right now you can ignore that decimal because we're multiplying, so just ignore it. Four times two is eight. 4 times 6 is 24, carry the 2. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 2 is 14, okay? Now, where are you going to put that decimal point? Well, your estimation said that it was 16 kilometers, but we know it was actually a little bit less than that because it was a little bit less than 4 kilometers a day. So I think 14 and 48 hundredths kilometers is probably the exact number. So what should you tell your math teacher? This is for the math teacher. And this is for the PE teacher, okay? They use the word gym, they mean PE. That's what we call it at our school, PE teacher. Or Phi Ed teacher, PE teacher, gym teacher. Every school says it a little differently, okay? So you tell your PE teacher, oh, I bike 16 kilometers a week. You tell your math teacher, actually, I bike 14 and 48 hundredths kilometers a week. Okay, there you go. The Poetry Club had its first bake sale and they made $79.35. The club members are planning to have four more bake sales. 
Leslie said, if we can make the same amount at each bake sale, we'll earn $3,967.50. Peggy said, no way. No way, Leslie. We'll earn $396.75 after five bake sales. Okay. Use estimation to help Peggy explain why Leslie's reasoning is inaccurate. Wrong, right? Inaccurate means wrong. Leslie is wrong. Show your reasoning using words, numbers, or pictures. Okay. So first of all, let's figure out. They had one bake sale where they got $79.35. If they had four more and made the same amount, that would be $79.35. 79, 35, 79, 35, and 79, 35, four more, right? So five total. We could add that up. Five and five is 10, 20, 25, carry the two. It's five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, carry the one. It's 10, 19, uh, 28, 37, 46, carry the 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, plus 7 is 18, plus 7 is 25, plus 7 is 32, plus 7 is 39. Okay, so there we did it, adding, just 5 times adding, 396 and 75 cents. So um, when she said 3,967, what did she do? She accidentally put the decimal point here. She moved it over here, didn't she? So that's what she did wrong. She had the decimal point in the wrong spot. Let's try it with multiplication, okay? So we did it with um, we did it with adding. Let's try it with multiplication. 79, 35 cents times five, okay? So 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 is 17, carry the 1. 5 times 9 is 40, 45, plus 1 is 46, carry the 4. 5 times 7 is 35, plus 9 is 39, okay? Now, we have to figure out where to use the decimal. Here's my trick. There are two decimal spaces right here, right? So I'm gonna count from this side and I'm gonna go one, two. Okay, so I counted here, one, two. So I'm gonna count from here, one, two. So my final answer is 396.75. Now, let's use some estimation. 79.35 cents. Well, can we just estimate? I'm not gonna say round because rounding would keep it at $79. But can we estimate this as being $80? And can we multiply that by five pretty easily? Which would be $400, right? So if we estimate that this is a $400 adventure, right? We know that she's wrong, 3,967. She has got some pipe dreams, right? But uh, $400 isn't bad, or $396.75, not too bad, okay? You could probably buy a Chromebook, maybe two Chromebooks with that. You could buy, not an iPad, you wouldn't get an iPad for that. What else could you get for the classroom? Markers for a whole year, oh, oh, whiteboard markers. My birthday's coming, you guys, whiteboard markers. I also accept chocolates and coffee. <laughs> okay, so lesson 12 homework we'll do tomorrow in class. And if you have any questions, please let me know. This is multiplying decimals, which we were working on uh, a bit in lesson 10. And we were working on it a little bit in class too. All right. And if you still haven't mastered multiplying multiple digits from fourth grade, you better be practicing, okay? Some of you are still struggling with things like 312 times 62, right? If you can't do this, how are you going to be able to do it with decimals, right? So practice, 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 practice your multiplication, practice. Okay, great. Have a good day.